Welcome back everybody. I am very excited today because I have had this idea for a long time of wanting to create a series of color grading videos that I release every couple of weeks where I just go over some projects that I'm working on and kind of go over my color grading process and how I kind of come up with looks for certain videos that I'm working on. A lot of you probably follow me because of my S-Log2 color grading videos and I do want to say that these will most likely be a mix between S-Log2 and slog 3cinna The particular video that I'll be showing you today was shot on my FX6 and slog 3 Cinna, and my goal is is to just kind of give you an overview of how I tackle quick color grades that I need to do for videos that I'm pumping out on YouTube or other client projects. So without further ado, let's jump into Premiere so I can give you a rundown on how I color graded my most recent project, Changing Seasons, which is uploaded on YouTube, which you can check out right above over here. Okay, here we are in Premiere, and this is the sequence that I have created for the short video that I was working on. As you can see here, I have all of my clips kind of already in place. There is no color grading or any effects applied to them at all whatsoever. They are all completely log clips, as you can see here. I've also gone ahead and locked all my audio because um, we're not going to be going over audio today. Like I said, this is just for color. So my main focus is going to be showing you how I would approach color grading this piece now with the assumption that everything is picture locked and we're almost done. So first I'll jump over here to my left hand project panel. I'm going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and make sure that is set to UHD. And you can see that I now have my adjustment layer right here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over all of my clips, making sure it covers everything. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you probably already understand my process. It's probably not the most original or unique process, but it's something that really, really works for me and is able to give me quick looks really fast. I don't know if this term has already been coined, but there's sort of LUT blending going on. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm using the phantom LUTs created by Joel Famolaro to convert this to a neutral RE sort of Rec 709 look. And then I kind of go through my presets that I've purchased from Film Riot, um, all the LUTs that I've uh, accumulated over the years from them or other companies. And I kind of lay another adjustment layer over that Rec 709 look to kind of sort of blend in a little bit of a grade to it. So with this here, let's go ahead and hit Alt and click on this and drag up and you can see that it'll duplicate my adjustment layer. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the bottom one. We're gonna hit rename and I'm gonna call this Rec 709 conversion. We're gonna hit OK. And then for the second one, we're gonna rename this and we're gonna call this look. So let's now jump into our color workspace. And what I like to have in my color workspace is my waveform with RGB and a vector scope with my skin tone line indicator, which lets me know uh, where my skin tones sort of need to land. So first things first, let's make sure we select our bottom adjustment layer and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the neutral FX6 LUT by Phantom LUTs. So already you can see that this is giving us a really nice sort of neutral look to start with. There's definitely some contrast, some luma curves that we need to adjust as well as give it some sort of look because although this LUT is really good for getting you into a balanced place, um, it doesn't necessarily give you that finished polished look that you're always looking for. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is select my secondary look adjustment layer and this is where I'm going to apply the actual grade or the, the LUT that's going to give this image a sort of feeling to it. So I have quite a bit of LUTs that I've accumulated over the years as you know. There's a few by Film Riot that I really, really, really swear by and I will drop those in, uh, I will drop a link to those in the description below. The Big Trouble in Little China LUT is a very, very fantastic, really uh, start to a grade. It gives you sort of a golden Western kind of filmic look. Um, as you can see here, it's kind of doing some wonders to uh, these clips by giving it sort of this nice warm tone. This, uh, this look is what I've used mostly in the past if you watch a lot of my videos, but there is another one that I've recently started messing around with, which is the Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 
Like I said, these LUTs are just named after movies, but really they all sort of have their own kind of style and look to them. So this is one that I really, really enjoy because I noticed that it crushes the blacks a little bit more. And instead of pushing warmth into the shadow areas, it kind of keeps the shadow areas a little bit more neutral, almost a little bit cooler, while still maintaining warmth in those midtones, which is which I really, really like about this. So here's our hero shot right here. And as you can see, if I go ahead and turn the look on and off, you can see really what it's doing to it. And it kind of pushes a lot of contrast into the image, but it also adds a nice warmth to the midtones and the highlights while keeping those shadows nice and cool. Honestly, at this point, you have a pretty good start. If you've exposed your footage correctly and everything is in a good place, you could probably just throw these two things on and call it good. If you have a quick turnaround or you need to get something up on the internet really quickly, this might be a good way to go. But as you can see in some of these clips, my exposure wasn't perfect or I need to subtract or add some contrast. Or with the, uh, this clip specifically, you can see that the white balance is a little bit off. So at this point, what I would do is I would go through all of these clips one by one and make adjustments to the clips themselves. So if I was going to say, fix the white balance on this clip right here. I would select the clip itself right here, go to my basic correction and start to make adjustments to this clip as needed. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You could try to do it by eye or you could use the uh, vector scope. What I sometimes do will just be is grab the eyedropper and select a white point and then kind of tone it down as needed. So there you go. If I AB this, this is kind of where it was when I started and this is where it's ended up now that I've made some adjustments to it, which is a pretty good uh, place to be. So I would go through and do a very similar thing to the rest of the clips, make sure that they are in a good spot. And in the instance for a clip like this, there's some extra things that you can do to make an image like this pop. As you can see, these beautiful red uh, kokanee salmon, um, that red is just such a striking, striking color. And you sometimes want to pull a little bit of those colors out a little bit more and maybe subdue a little bit of the colors of the leaves in the background. So in this case, you can go ahead and go to curves. And what I would typically do is go to hue versus saturation. You can just go ahead and grab this really quickly. And as you can see, if I bring this down, it will desaturate that red quite a bit. And as I bring it up, it will saturate it. Now, if you look at your vector scope, it's typically uh, a good best practice to not try to pass where those lines are at the edge there. So typically what I'll do is kind of find my points for where red is uh, needing to be saturated a little bit more. And then I'll kind of just go ahead and pull them up a little bit. Remember, you don't want it to look unnatural. You just want to sort of give it a nice little pop to draw attention to it. And then as you can see here, if I wanted to pull a little bit of saturation out of those leaves, then I can select orange and kind of bring it down just a little bit. What I'd also do with this clip is go ahead and pull some of those blacks down, shadows up just to give it a little bit more pop and then a nice little vignette just to round it out a little bit more. And again, if I AB, this is what it looked like before and this is what it's looked like after I've graded. Now let me go ahead and show you what I would do to a clip that might need a little bit more work. Not only does this clip maybe need a little bit of color adjustment, but it also needs a little bit of attention drawn on the subject, and it maybe needs a little bit of cropping and rotating to kind of even out that horizontal plane there. So if I were to go into this clip, I would first start with adjusting that horizontal plane. So I might scale in to 105, and I might go ahead and adjust my rotation, maybe let's say by two. And as you can see there, it's already kind of made that horizontal plane a little bit more even, which makes the image feel a little bit more natural. And then I can go ahead and adjust this as needed because we're seeing a little bit of black on the top there. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this to 108 instead and find a good spot to crop it. There we go, that's looking much better. Now for color, I'm gonna go back to my Lumetri scopes. I will go to basic correction. And really what I need to do here is just pull some of these blacks down and pull some of those whites down as well. So I usually go to about the 90 IRE mark or a little bit above for my whites when I'm exposing, especially for skies. So that's looking pretty good. And I might pull my shadows down just a tad. And then another trick that I do sometimes with blue skies is I'll go to my curves and I will go to hue versus luma. I will select my blues 
And sometimes I'll just pull the luma of the blues down a little bit. It sort of acts like uh, how a circular pol polarizer filter might act. So you kind of pulls a little bit more contrast into your sky areas. So I won't do too much, maybe just around there. And I'm also gonna go ahead and pull the saturation of that blue down just a little bit because I don't want it to be super unnatural looking. So somewhere around there. Let's go ahead and make sure I, our white balance is in a good spot. Yep, it looks like I shot this pretty well, so it doesn't need too much adjustment with the white balance there. And then the last thing that I would go ahead and do is just to add a little bit more pop to the subject, I'm gonna go ahead and create a Lumetri mask. So I will go to my Lumetri panel, I will do add Lumetri effect, and then on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a mask around my subject. Now I will say something like this is so much easier to do in DaVinci Resolve because you can create power windows. It's a lot better software to do something like this. Um, Premiere is definitely not my favorite software to do this in, but like I said, if I'm doing something rather quickly, then sometimes I'll just do it in Premiere. So now that I've created my mask around my subject, I've gone ahead and feathered it out as much as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the exposure up. And as you can see, it's sort of just bringing a little bit more light onto my subject and somewhere around there looks good. I might even bring my shadows up just a little bit. And there we go. Now, if we take a look at it, uh, this is what it looks like before. As you can see, very dark on my subject, your eyes are drawn to the mountains. And then as we click the effects button, you can see that it's brought in a lot more light onto my subject, which kind of helps you focus on the subject a little bit more. Great, I'm gonna keep this one short this week, um, but if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. There's tons of other clips that I'm happy to go over. I will probably do another video next time, um, but if there is a lot of questions for this one, I might pop this one back in and go over some of my process with these clips. But yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed that video. That will be it for today, but please make sure to subscribe down below. We are about to hit 5,000 subscribers here on this channel, and my goal is, is that I will try to release these kinds of videos every couple of weeks or so. So if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below, and I will try to answer those on the next video. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.